Hello, I'm Lindsay Brook, and I'm senior editor of Automotive Engineering International magazine, published by the SAE. And today, the first day of the Detroit Auto Show, we're here at Cobo Hall in Detroit, and product development is on everybody's mind because this industry is so competitive and product cadences are happening so, so fast, so rapidly today. So we're going to be talking to Mary Barra. She's vice president of global product development for General Motors. Hi, Mary. Hey, how are you? I'd like to get started by saying, uh, by asking Mary uh, a little bit about her background. She came from uh, global manufacturing engineering. And what did that experience, Mary, prepare you for in your current job as head of Global PD? Well, as a part of being responsible for manufacturing engineering, I actually sat on the product development staff as well because it's such an integrated of pr product and process of developing it together. So in each of the areas, uh, you know, we work closely together. So I think it was a very good um, uh, step in being ready for this job to have an understanding of, uh, understanding of where we were headed from a global product development perspective, but then also what it takes to actually manufacture the vehicles we're designing. So I think it was a big benefit. Recently, GM uh, reported that uh, the white-collar workforce was under analysis for a possible reduction. I was curious as to how, how and if that is going to uh, affect engineering. Well, when we look across engineering, we're really looking, um, and we found that we had opportunities. In some of the cases, when we had first done some of our global programs, we had actually um, divided the work between too many engineering centers and therefore increased the degree of difficulty, especially when it came to integrating the vehicles. So what we've been focused on is making sure that we have the right resources and a balance between design engineering to do the appropriate amount of work in one location so we can optimize it and get the best results, highest quality, and get it quicker. So that's really been our focus. A second focus has been we, when we analyzed our staff, we found that we had a lot of people working on supporting engineering as opposed to actually doing the engineering. So what we've focused on is shifting those resources into roles where they're actually working on new vehicle programs. So that's been really our focus uh, from a product development perspective. Uh, also, you're looking to reduce your vehicle architectures globally, mm -hmm. and I think the number is from 30-some today to 18 or to 15. I mean, it's a dramatic uh, mm -hmm. reduction by 2018. How's that activity coming? Well, I would say we're on track. We continue with each new launch and some of the vehicles that you see on the floor here today. Those are all off of global architectures, and so we're right on track, and we continue that progression, and, you know, really what that allows us is to, to leverage, uh, you know, very good designs for from an architecture perspective, but then have very unique variants off of those architectures that are true to the brand and true to what the customers want in those segments. Mm. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, some recent programs have really pushed technology, Volt being one of them. Mm -hmm. That car was kind of on a parallel development track, you know, powertrain was developed, decoupled from the vehicle platform. Mm -hmm. Is that activity still going on today or are most powertrains and subsystems uh, uh, coupled with the vehicle program, so to speak? Well, you know, some different technology has a different length of development time, and especially for pioneering new technology, um, you know, we'll have those in parallel paths. We have decoupled development programs. So we use a variety of methods, but I, I find nothing works better than having everything come together with a deadline that truly motivates the team to get it all done and make sure it's integrated together. So it's a variety. Mary, who is the world's most efficient automaker in terms of utilization of engineering resources? Uh, is it GM? Are you guys benchmarking another automaker? And if it's not GM, when do you expect to be that kind of most efficient engineering resource utilizing automaker? Well, you know, I don't think any of the of the major OEMs, uh, you know, share information that you can definitively say this this group is the most efficient. I think you know we look and and really want to understand all of our competitors and know where the big opportunities are. And we've had some some lessons uh, learned, but also then looking how do we improve internally. So I think it's a mix of both. I can't tell you definitively this is who I think is the most. I can tell you we are focused on looking at every area of our development process from design to engineering to validation across vehicle and powertrain to make sure we're as efficient as we can be learning lessons from other OEMs. Thank you. Turning mm -hmm. to China, uh, mm -hmm. China, the government just recently uh, announced that it was going to kind of curtail foreign investment, uh, particularly in auto manufacturing, but sounded like foreign automaker investment to focus on the domestic industry and the domestic market. Is that affecting General Motors at all in terms of your own PD efforts for China? Well, we have a great partnership with SEIC and SGM. We also have a partnership, uh, our SGM 
Wuling and also with FAW. And so I think we have really strong partnerships that have, uh, have made significant progress in the market. And we'll continue to work and make sure we're doing the product development work in our joint ventures and work that's done at GM to support those. And so we'll continue on that path. Recently, uh, I was last October at the ITS Congress in Las Vegas. Um, Alan Taub, who's head of R&D for General Motors, mm -hmm. uh, kind of surprised everybody by saying that he thought by the middle of next decade, at least semi-autonomous vehicles would be kind of ready for production. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. I wonder if he checked with Mary on that statement. But I mean, if that's true, you know, how do you feel about uh, autonomous vehicles and developing them and what track that's on in terms of your own PD efforts? Well, um, you know, we work closely with Alan, and I think that prediction was, was his, but, um, you know, I think we're making sure that we have the technology and we've got the vehicles ready, and we understand, um, you know, where, where, what the technology is capable of, where we want it to be, and how we integrate that seamlessly into the vehicle. Then along with what are the requirements that come with the infrastructure, it has to all come together. So I'm not going to make any prediction, but I will tell you that, you know, it's a, we think it's a very important area, and we continue to work and, and do our uh, development so so that we can be in a leadership position. Last question, my organization, SAE, is uh, working with the NHTSA in establishing a whole portfolio of new standards for testing electrified vehicles. Um, and uh, I just wanted to know, you know, your feeling on the importance of this to electrified vehicle product development moving forward. I think it's critically important, and I think it's going to really help the entire industry. I know a lot of the work that we did uh, in our leadership position with the Volt with an extended range electric vehicle, um, I think as we we take those learnings and we we create the standards, I think it's going to help advance the whole industry. So I think it's a very positive thing and I think it's critical for the industry. Is this a learning for General Motors because you guys really were in the vanguard of this mm -hmm. and of course the first one in is kind of is exposed to um, is exposed to things like, you know, the Volt is going through right now, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're very uh, comfortable with the Volt. Uh, we're very, we, you know, the Volt is a safe vehicle. It has many third-party endorsements that indicate that. We're very, uh, the amount of, we put over 285,000 hours or 25 years of operation of testing into the Volt battery. We're very comfortable and very confident in the, the cell design and the uh, liquid cool design. And so, um, you know, when you're in a leadership position, are there going to be things that, the, that you know, industry or consumers learn? Absolutely, but that's not a reason to not continue to push to be in that leadership position, and uh, we're, we're very um, confident on the path we're on. Mary, thanks so much for your time today. I know you're busy with the auto show, and we look forward to the next uh, conversation that we have. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks Appreciate so much. Appreciate it.